All right, well, this is just gonna be really quick. I just, I walked down so you can see, this is Waterford Upstart. Uh, it's right there. Walking across the parking lot, some reeds, and then this is, this is the head of Sorensen Communications. You can see there um, on the top of the building. And, you know, again, it's just a parking lot. Um, I've got my siege going. I've got not too much more left. I've saved one last little bit because I wanna, want to try to hit up the uh, headquarters of Google Cloud, the new headquarters of Google Cloud on my way to the airport, one last thing. Um, but again, I just, I guess I don't have too much more to say about Sorensen, but I think, you know, it's hard because I, I spoke with some people uh, on Friday night, uh, the, the, the group that I was with, and it's a small town. I mean, I mean, it's a big, it's a city, it's a large city, but it's also a small town and people know each other. And, you know, I think for the most part, it's people's inclination to give others the benefit of the doubt that they don't know what it is that they're doing, that they don't know what they're doing is wrong. And um, so that's why I, I show up. I try to show up and say, you know, are these the people, is this, is this, is this who we are? I mean, I know it's what we have been. I'm not saying that in any way that the, the past history is in any way a good history and somehow we've just recently gone wrong. I think it's, it's been wrong for a very long time. But to, to give people, to sort of show up and show a mirror to what this actually is and to say that it's not right and to, to take away the idea of plausible deniability and that we all have a responsibility in taking a part. And it's, it's not easy. It's not... Um, it's not something that is easily done, but it has to be done because ultimately what's coming next is gonna be AI running the world as a planetary computer, right? I mean, that's that's what's coming. And you know, I, what I keep trying to say is I think across the spectrum of people's interests, if we actually come to grips with that we live in a world that could be abundant, like this, this valley, which here, I'll, I'll just show you know, the view, it's an amazing, these mountains are incredible. Like, you know, I, I got to go up in them yesterday and, you know, it's, so this corporatism is sort of nestled in these hills and it's quite, I mean, that's why I, you know, my background is in cultural landscape. So I like to actually come and see it. And it's this juxtaposition of, you know, corporatism and natural beauty. And, you know, we could have enough if we could redistribute like the resources. There's no reason that Jeff Bezos should have all the money and then give quote unquote Montessori pre-K to kids or this Waterford upstart for kids. It's just, we, we could collectively refuse, but it has to be done from a position of caring for all the children, not just like, I want to protect my kids or the kids in my school district or the kids in my city actually has to be a global program. We can't protect the kids here in the United States and let the kids in India be stuck on Bridges International online tablet computer systems either because they're gonna be set up to code the global digital jail and that's as an impact commodity and that's what's coming. So, you know, again, I, I did not realize it until I came here and I went to the University of Utah the day before yesterday and we saw that this Merrill Engineering Lab really what they were good at was video, like video graphics and uh, virtualization, this virtualization of a teapot. You know, in the seventies that they turned a sketch of a real tea, like looked at a real teapot, made a pencil sketch of it, and then converted the pencil sketch into a data to turn it into a virtual item. It's a virtual item. It's exactly what we're talking about in these video games of owning virtual items. And it's this virtualization that goes all the way back 50 years. And now we're like potentially gonna be forced into this virtualized video game world of surveillance and predatory philanthropy, like straight up predatory philanthropy. And many people, because they don't have the, the understanding of both the history of the legacy of enslavement and indigenous genocide, and you know, they don't know about these financial instruments. They don't understand how they're interfacing with uh, AI and predictive analytics and sensor networks that they just think that they're doing OK, that they're doing the right thing and, and you know, pat on the back and give, you know, for handing over the cardboard check and it's not going to be enough. So, again, I'm just going to uh, here's my my little offering. Um, you know, and just say, you know, on the on behalf again, on behalf of 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 the the, the the mothers of the earth, of the grandmothers of the earth, of the parents, of the elders, of people who want to be human and not be avatars in a planetary computer. We're not going to give you our DNA. We're not going to be genomically sequenced for Utah's 1,000 life science companies to grow their bottom line on turning us into 
you know, cyborgs with nanotech and, you know, gene therapies on healthy people. We're not, we're not going to put our children on online programs so you can run your social impact bonds. And, you know, we're, we refuse. Any consent given or implied is hereby revoked. And we're, you know, I'm just showing up today. I'm going to, you know. These are powerful actors. You know, I encourage people to look up Sorensen Genomics. You know, I was in the Dirksen Senate building that day. I saw it's bipartisan, folks. It was, you know, it was all Republican senators up there giving the speeches, and it was all Obama's policy people, the ones who were put doing pay for success, Medicaid, tracking pregnant, low-income pregnant women in South Carolina, and the same guy went up to Connecticut and he's monitoring, you know, poor women who with, you know, addiction, substance issues in Connecticut. And it's all for the hedge funds. It's all for the hedge funds. So, and you know what? I've been listening to Shisana Zuboff most of the last couple of days and she does a really good job talking about Google and talking about the data and behavioral surplus and nudges. But, you know, she never links. I mean, I'm not all the way to the end and correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe she'll get there, but she's not talking about the hedge funds. Nobody's talking about that part and that our government is handing us over to them. Both sides of the aisle, both sides of the aisle. And, um, you know, people who, and I'm, you know, I'm not just putting this on Sorensen, LDS, whatever, you know, I was at the, you know, the cathedral yesterday and the Catholic Relief Services, all of these faith-based services, they're going to be running the social impact markets, whether they like it or not. And I, I have to believe in my heart, most people don't become preschool teachers so they can put kids on Chromebooks and look at them as data. You know, they, they become teachers because they have a calling, because they care for children and the next generation and life and beauty. And just like my friend who hosted me in her beautiful Waldorf preschool, you know, I, you know, it has a, like a cozy little stove and, you know, the teapots, they, they would have tea parties, right? Like little tea parties with real teacups and things and not, you wouldn't have these stupid online virtual teacup items and virtual reality. And, you know, I will just say I'm in closing, you know, Heckman, who's behind this early childhood equation, you know, that's legitimizing all of the home visit programs and the pre-K programs and the literacy programs. You know, I watched a video that's part of this social emotional learning conference he hosted. It was his event that he brought in people from all over the country, some were international to talk about social emotional behavior. And my understanding is that the wife of the governor of Utah is really pushing social emotional learning, which is about, it's going to, it's going to sound good, but it's about digital brainwashing these kids. And, you know, I've said it before, but there was a guy in the room and he couldn't get the parents to make the kids use an app. It was a pre-K app. And they kept saying, the parents for this study, they keep saying they're going to use it and then they don't. We can't make them use it. And so Heckman looked at the guy and he said, well, you're treating parents like they're some kind of like authority figure that they know things. They don't. So really what you need to do is you need to gamify it. You need to gamify it for the parents, but with some like a build a kid game. But you need a good incentive. You need a good incentive like, well, maybe pornography. That's what he said. And then all the people in the room kind of like just stared at him because he invited them, right? Like he's the Nobel Prize winning economist. He's the esteemed guy in the oak paneled room. And they said, well, you know, like a good, good um, incentive, like, oh, just kidding. No, really just kidding. But I mean, a good incentive. And, you know, in the same conference, people were talking about the PBS Kids app, apps and the Daniel Tiger Tea Party game. And I think about like the virtual tea party and the Daniel Tiger Tea Party, you know, and it's PBS Kids and it's this takeoff of Mr. Rogers. And they're saying, well, you know, we're going to watch if, if we if you share your cookies right in the Daniel Tiger Tea Party game. And, and then if you don't, we're going to nudge you to share properly. And then if you still don't, like, we're going to know. We're going to know if you didn't share properly in the Daniel Tiger Tea Party game. And that's going to be an impact market because the impact market is on behavior change and the Ocean 5 traits. And, and that's why the kids have to do online preschool. And that's why they have to be on surveillance play tables. Because they're building a world where they want people to be robots. I mean, they, they straight up said by 2050, they want people to like be relieved of having a physical mind and body in time and space. I mean, that's the Japan Moonshot Project. 
And they know this and they're trying to condition. They're really trying to either break people who emotionally can't handle it or reshape people's worldview and disconnect them from the natural world to make this happen because the babies today will be the 30 year olds tomorrow to in 2050. And they're making this reality happen. So I'm just going to give you one last view of these beautiful mountains here. You know, these are the old beings. <laughs> <laughs> these are the old beings that have been here for a very long time. And I tell you, these biotech and these human scientists, they're just, they have incredible hubris to want to play God in this world. So thanks for listening. I'm going to try to maybe hit up the Google Cloud place on my last stop. Be well, friends.